insects make terrible characters for children's <laughs> cartoons, Al. And he said, no, no, it's a rock and roll group, the Beatles. This is a special year. 2018 marks the 50th anniversary of your work on the film Yellow Submarine and the Beatles cartoon. Taylor, I can't tell you how 50 years goes by. It just goes by so fast you have to watch out for it, okay? It was a fun project for me. Uh, it was a surprise project. I had just arrived in America and I got a telephone call from Al Brodak saying, hey, we've got some production problems here. We need some help. So all I did on the Yellow Submarine was animate. We would receive the scenes from London. We would animate the scenes in pencil and then we would ship all the pencil drawings back to London and it was as simple as that and at the same time as I was doing that my wife was inconveniently pregnant and as a result I was a very hard-working young man and I was uh, animating in the evenings also on uh, a show you might have heard of called George of the Jungle and I was also working on the very first season of Scooby-Doo Where Are You so I was doing some significant stuff in my 28th year of life. Were you a Beatles fan when you started working on this project? Well, um, my first experience with the Beatles was from New York, from Al Brodax of King Features, who he said, Ron, we've just sold a wonderful TV show. Uh, we're going to be producing it later on in the year. I said, that's great, Al. What's the show? And he said, it's the Beatles. <laughs> Insects make terrible characters for children's <laughs> cartoons, Al. And he said, no, no, it's a rock and roll group. The Beatles, I think I've heard of it. It was 1964, and I think they were enormously successful in America, but I'm afraid I was teaching myself how to make cartoons, and I wasn't taking too much notice of popular music. Right, and you thought so, he was talking about insects. Yeah, and another thought I had in my head was maybe it's Volkswagens driving around as characters, but uh, no, it was a rock and roll group, and a darn famous one at that. Did you ever meet any of the Beatles? No, I didn't. I was always on the other side of the world. When did art and drawing come into your life? I guess I was about six years old, perhaps. In those days, there was no TV in Australia. No TV at all. Never heard of it. And the local movie theaters would turn their um, programming plans over on a Saturday afternoon for all the local kids to go to the movies. Mm -hmm. And there were things like strange creatures running around on the screen like a cat chasing a mouse. And I couldn't figure it out. What were they? I mean, I, they weren't real, were they? So I'm telling my great grandmother about these weird things I'm seeing on a Saturday afternoon at the movies. And she said, Ronnie, they're just drawings. And if a six-year-old can have an epiphany, I had an epiphany there. You mean my drawings can come alive? How do you do that? And I'm afraid I took that incredible feeling about my own drawings coming alive with me all through my childhood, refusing to become a f policeman or a fireman or something sensible. And of course, in Australia with no TV, it was impossible to earn a living as an animator, but I didn't care. Then when I went into art school, as luck would happen, television came to Australia and opened up. And for the first time, it was possible to earn a living as an animator. So I was right there on the leading edge of animation in Australia. Yeah. So when Al Brodax came in with um, projects, there I was, Johnny on the spot. La vie, life. What, what a fantastic the way it is. story. Yeah. All that serendipitous timing and everything yeah, worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, uh, if I'd been born 10 years earlier, it probably wouldn't have happened. I'm I sure. might have been a policeman. You <laughs> might have been. <laughs> Give us a window into your work. You've worked on so many beloved shows and stories that we all remember so fondly. The first thing that comes to my mind when I think back is, gosh, I don't ever remember waking up in the morning and saying, damn, I've got to go to work. I always enjoyed what I did. I managed to produce my own TV show called The Big Blue Marvel, which was a highlight of my life and very nicely found myself always working on shows that I really liked. What can you complain about if you spent 10 years of your life working on, say, The Rugrats? Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, is there a more charming show one could be 
find oneself working. I, I mean, don't think so. Years, that was a wonderful show. Another 10 years of my life primarily working on the Smurfs. I look back on my career as a screen cartoonist with much gratitude. What about the art that you're creating today? It's like a whole new chapter. Ah, when you come to retire, uh, don't retire. Take a second act. After 50 years and one month to the day, I thought, I'm going to paint. But what do I paint? I'm not going to paint the cactuses in my back garden or the mountains off on the side. I'm going to do paintings based on the cartoon shows that I did. Lo and behold, people wanted to buy the damn things. You know. <laughs> My wife thought, that's nice, and a part of the pleasure in my life now is traveling around the country with my paintings and selling them. When you're making cartoon films, you're always conscious of the ratings of the show. And since I've been exhibiting my paintings, I've been meeting the real audience, the flesh and blood audience, not numbers on a table, mm -hmm. the real people who have nostalgic memories of the cartoons that I helped make. Changing the channels, insisting on watching Scooby-Doo, <laughs> or their parents upstairs sleeping while that was time in front of the TV was theirs. What an effect we had on the cultural activity, or cultural life of the children. Mm -hmm. And now they're adults. Can you pick a favorite show that you worked on? There's only one answer to that. You have six children, which is your favorite? You know, it's, <laughs> not, it's not really possible. Is know. there a character you really enjoyed drawing and bringing to life? There was one show that irritated me. Um, uh, it was the Harlem Globetrotters, and the characters always had to do this with the ball, you know. That, and so even when they're standing still, they're still bouncing this darn <laughs> ball, you know. And that was a pest, you know. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your journey with us. Can we oh, see sure. some of your work in action over there? Yeah. This is an All You Need Is Love piece. It's based on the Yellow Submarine characters, but they're wearing the Sergeant Pepper outfit, and there's a nice villain here, the Chief Blumini, <laughs> enigmatically laying across the word love. You have to have a palette with many little holes in it, and sometimes that's not even enough. I need a lot of colors. Yeah. So is this piece done? It will be done as soon as I sign it. For some reason, I color my signature, and it takes me five minutes to sign anything at all, and it's a bit of a pest. <laughs> it's something that I did once in front of a customer, and the customer jumped up and down with glee, and then I did it in front of another customer, and so now I have to sign my name in color every time I sign it. The finishing I touch on the piece, yes, absolutely. It's such mm -hmm. an honor to share this time with you. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor.